In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this quadcopter. This is the iFlight XL5 V3. So first we've got the LDARC 2306 2500 KV motors. And we've got the KK Super Tower, which is a pretty nice little stack. It features an integrated 600 milliwatt VTX. And we've got a 4-in-1 ESC that goes up to 40 amps and it features a current sensor. The stack comes with a lot of nice extras, including a capacitor and a number of connectors. First, you've got a receiver connector, a camera connector, and an LED bar and buzzer connector. So unless you want to do something fancy, you don't even need to solder anything to the flight controller. Next, we've got the camera, which is a Runcam Eagle 2. Great camera, one of my favorites. Now, let's open up the frame. We've got uh, pretty decent instructions. We have uh, stickers, battery pads, landing skids, screws, standoffs, uh, just about everything you need. And the carbon's really nice. It has uh, chamfered edges, a nice smooth finish to it, and uh, it's definitely a great value. So it's pretty straightforward to put this together, but uh, first things first, you need to find the press nuts and the 10 millimeter screws. When you screw the arms in, make sure you pay attention to the orientation because it's possible to screw them in upside down. I made this mistake, so don't do the same. So you might notice that the press nuts don't fit into the holes so that they don't rotate, so we'll have to use a little wrench to tighten those at the end. I just put them in finger tight at first and just tighten them all down at the end. So I've got this prop tool which works great for tightening everything down. I just hold it with my thumb and uh, screw the screws in. Now you can mount the motors. So I needed to get a little creative with the stack and what I ended up doing was using the 15 millimeter screws with the uh, rubber dampers from the stack. This worked out great because I was able to use the rubberized uh, vibration dampers on top of the 4-in-1 ESC. So now let's solder the motor wires. I love these flux pens. You just need to give it a little shake and uh, make sure the tip is wet and just uh, coat each tab just a little bit. And that's just enough to uh, make sure the solder sticks. Fill every pad with solder. Uh, it's always best just to make sure that you don't see any of the pad and um, that'll be a perfect foundation for the motor wires. Now this is completely optional, but uh, I like to sleeve my motor wires with a little bit of Paramax or Battle Cord. It's a type of paracord. Regular 550 paracord won't work because it's not uh, wide enough, so that's why I recommend these other types. Not only does it protect your wires, but it looks pretty nice in the end. So here's how I solder my wires. It's a pretty straightforward process. Basically, I just cut each one to length as I go. I tin each wire as I go, and I just push them right onto the balls of solder that I pre-applied. There might be some mistakes here and there, but uh, that's nothing a little uh, flux can't fix. So if your solders don't look quite right, or you start getting a pointy bit when you pull your iron away from it, just apply a little flux to it, and that'll smooth it right out. It'll give you a nice shiny ball of solder. Anyway, this is probably the most time-consuming process of the whole build, so once you've got this down, the rest is smooth sailing. Now that the motors are all soldered up, you just need to melt down the heat shrink. And this is also only if you're um, using the uh, Paramax to cover the motor wires. Next, you can either solder up the power leads or the receiver. Uh, first thing I did here was solder up the receiver. I used the uh, XM Plus, which is an FR Sky receiver, and um, because it's a 5 volt receiver, I removed the 3.3 volt green wire from the wire harness that came with the flight controller. Uh, referring to the XM Plus uh, wiring diagram, I soldered up the wires, making sure the S bus goes to the right uh, pad as well as the 5 volt in the ground. Here I just gave the solders a quick flux and a reflow to make them nice and shiny. Next, let's uh, solder on the battery lead. First, you want to flex the pads, and let's add the capacitor. 
This is um, really handy for cleaning up any electronic noise that might uh, interfere with your video or even might interfere with your gyro. It's not required and a lot of people build without them, but um, we've got a nice spot for it. It came with the flight controller, so why not? All I needed to do was just rest it here and uh, add a little bit of solder to hold it in place and just snip off the ends and uh, cover up the tips and you're all set for the battery lead. So to prepare the battery lead, let's just tin the ends here a little bit. And um, all you really need to do is uh, push it down onto the solder that you already applied to uh, hold the capacitor in place. It works pretty well. I used a little bit of flux to clean up the solders and make them look nice. I may have used a little more solder than I needed to, but uh, I like to have a nice shiny ball of solder, so at least the wires aren't going anywhere. Let me just show you the magic of flux. See how these uh, solder joints are a little bit hazy? Just apply a little bit of flux and dab your iron on there and they shine right up. Now it's always good to check for continuity before you apply any battery power. Now we can start putting the stack together and uh, bind the receiver. So first you need this connector to connect the 4-in-1 ESC to the flight controller. This uh, sends all the outputs to the motors and uh, leads power to the flight controller. Once you've done that, you can plug your receiver back in and bind it. So what I like to do is uh, hold the bind button with some tweezers and then maybe a little alligator clip to keep some pressure on it. And uh, that way it frees up a hand to plug the battery in. So plug the battery in, that puts the receiver in bind mode, then put your radio into bind mode to bind, and you should be bound. Once you're bound, you can tuck the receiver away. I like to cut a little piece of shrink tube to protect it. I don't heat it all the way, just enough to get a little grip on it in case I need to take it out later. And um, it's a good idea just to slide it under the 4-in-1. You might need to loosen your stack so you can fit it in there and um, just apply a little pressure to hold it down and um, you can put everything back together. So now you can mount the antennas and generally what I do is uh, attach a couple zip ties to the arms. A uh, nice thin zip tie will work and um, kind of angle them at a 90 degree angle from one another and just feed the uh, antennas over the zip tie into some shrink tube and melt it into place. This uh, protects them and it keeps them in a, at a good angle from one another. Don't forget to plug your receiver in. And now all we need to do is the camera and the antenna. So you can screw your camera in between the side plates first. Make sure you add a little washer between uh, the camera and one of the side plates because it's just not quite wide enough for the frame. For the antenna, just kind of bend it in this way and uh, plug that into the flight controller as well and you're pretty much done. To finish up, just add the top plate with the standoffs and screw it all together. And that's that. It's also a good idea to zip tie the antenna to the top plate. That way it's safe from the propellers. And at this point, you're done with the build part of the process and now you're all set to plug it into Betaflight and configure it. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments. Thank you. Bye.